this cannot be something that is tethered to one color or political party. Absolutely. Or one economic class. Because we just can't help ourselves as Americans. We watch our channels. We listen to what we listen to. We, you know, we donate to who we donate to. And there's these echo chambers. And this movement will never get where it has to go if that's our approach. You know, I always tell people the reason why Social Security has lasted so long is because everybody's grandma gets it. Bipartisan. Everybody's yep. grandpa gets it. I don't care what your economic background is. At a certain age, now we can talk about life expectancy and how that that's a whole <laughs> other conversation. But, right. but in principle, everyone has access to it. And that's why it's hard to get rid of. Right. <laughs> For either party. They can talk a big game, but don't touch Social Security. <laughs> and I want the science of reading and, and reading in general to be that. This has to be an everybody thing. Right. Which is tough. It's tough in America because everybody things requires a public that has an appetite for cooperation. And for whatever reason, we just don't. Uh, like, I'm just going to keep it real with you. We just don't. We, we are bifurcate. We're split. And we are developing a disdain for each other. Now, I'm not going to get into politics of all that, but I will say that we color everything with a political lens. So mm -hmm. I'm fighting like the Dickens to get this out of the political arena, which is tough because that's what everything is put through and just make this a humanity issue. That's why the NAACP is so important. There are civil rights. Everybody has civil rights. Right. Right. In Ontario, Canada, the Human Rights Commission, it's called the Right to Read Commission, talked about the science of reading and how to improve literacy. It was under the Human Rights Commission. And so that's where literacy has to go. It matters to me if my neighbor can read or not. It matters to me if their child can read. I don't want uh, black people who can't read. I don't want white people who can't read. I don't want Latino people who care. I don't want anybody right. to, to not ha to not have that skill. Well, and you don't care if they're Republican or Democrat, right? Heck like no. Everybody has Heck the right no. to read. In fact, because I also, first of all, I respect your humanity, mm -hmm. right? Forget about the politics. I respect your humanity. Two, I'm safer. My country is safer. My wife is safer when she walks to her car. I'm safer when I'm fishing on the bayou. Like our economy is safer. When we can read, when, when people can't read, they get desperate, they get desperate. And it's in a vicious society that rewards merit, that rewards skill, that rewards access. If you don't have it, you're on a razor's edge and there's no telling how people respond to that. Now, to their credit, most people figure out how to make life work. But there are some people who just say, screw it. Right. They couldn't even teach me to read. Why should I why should I hold back anything? Why should I care about them? Why should I care about this? Well, it, it does matter. And that's why it matters to me what my neighbor's children can do. It matters to me what the community over there, their children can do. It matters the quality of their schools. It matters the reading program they have. I could say, well, forget them. They've got money. Beverly Hills, 72 or 73% of their third graders are reading proficiently in this last California state test. Well, that's great. So I should leave. No, that means one out of four of their third graders right. can't read. That means, and, and that means they're spending money to, you know, to remediate and support the kids. And we have to stop assuming that other people's issues don't matter because of their context. I learned right. that when I was in high school, when I was sent off to a, 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 through a program called A Better Chance, I was taken out the hood and I was sent to a place where were very, very wealthy people who were now doing all kinds of amazing things. And I recognized and learned that, oh, they got problems too. So yeah, my community is on fire because of the crack epidemic, but this little girl's got a eating disorder. This kid over here, their parents, like everybody's got stuff. Right. And right. I have to be human enough to recognize other people's stuff matters and that we have to be able to engage in common cause towards a common purpose for a common humanity and that I think is part of our society growing up a little bit and being able to see each other as 
equal participants and equal sojourners in a societal project. 